This is the pride of my film collection. I have at least one copy of every Godzilla movie ever released in the franchise, with the newest release, Godzilla vs. Kong. Not only will I be talking about what's in my collection in this video, I'll be going over the different releases and sort of giving a buying guide to newcomers to the franchise that want to start building their own collection as well. While I do have some VHS tapes, I'm going to be mostly talking about the DVD and Blu-ray releases. There is merit to owning the VHSs as a collector, but if you're new to the franchise or still trying to finish collecting on disc, I wouldn't recommend getting the tapes just yet. I myself have only recently started doing research into the different tapes, learning the different releases and the different dubs on them, so they're only for real die-hard collectors. Godzilla 1985, however, is a special case. This movie has not officially been released on DVD or Blu-ray, only available on tape and Laserdisc because of some copyright issues. If you still got a VCR and you want to get a Godzilla tape, get that one. I'm going to break this thing down into eras first by DVD and then second by Blu-ray. And of course you have to start with the very original, Gojira. There have been several DVD releases of King of the Monsters, the English version, but this was the first real release that had the original Japanese film along with the English release, King of the Monsters. This release is part of the Toho Master Collection box set, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. This is undoubtedly the best and most definitive way to own Gojira on DVD. You could maybe argue the Criterion release, but I think if you're going to get the Criterion release, just get the Blu-ray. If you're going to get the DVD, this is the one you want to hunt down. The packaging on this is just absolutely glorious. It's beautiful to look at. One of the best packaging out of the entire collection that I have. You see on the inside here, you have Gojira on one disc and the English release King of the Monsters on the second disc. There's also a nice little booklet inside as well. This was one of the first releases that I owned of this film and I think that it still holds up in terms of quality, picture-wise, uh, bonus features are really cool on here. It's just a great thing to have in your collection. And out of all of the previous DVD releases, as I said, this is the definitive way of owning it. Alright, next up in the collection is Godzilla Raids Again, also known as Godzilla's Counterattack. It was also originally released as Gigantus in the United States. This movie came out in 1955, only a year after the original 1954 Gojira had come out. It came out in 1959 in the United States, however. Looking at the other US releases, it's actually pretty fast, all things considered. It was also originally released as Gigantus in the United States. As you can see, this is a slimmer, yet similar packaging to the Gojira Toho Master Collection release. It's a nice shiny book style case. All of the packaging on the Toho Master Collections are consistent and beautiful to look at, especially side by side. Fun fact, this film actually contains the work of a very young George Takei. You can see inside of here we have some cool artwork of Anguirus, or uh, not artwork, but a frame from the film. But all of the disc artwork is consistent as well, and it looks really nice if you put them together. And I'll actually talk more about that in a second, because they did do that in a set before. This DVD is one of the few releases of this film, officially. You have the VHS tape, which I believe has the original Gigantus title card, but I may be wrong about that. And then you may be wrong about that. And then you also have the Criterion box set release, which of course I'll talk about when I get to the Blu-rays. Now, I don't actually have a copy of King Kong vs. Godzilla on hand on DVD, but I do have a Blu-ray, and they're basically the same, but I'll talk more about that when we get to the Blu-ray section. So moving on to the next three films, Mothra vs. Godzilla, Ghidorah, Three-Headed Monster, and Invasion of Astro Monster, all released in the Toho Master Collection box set. All very similar packaging, very beautiful. On the bottoms, you can see the US titles, Mothra vs. The Thing. Three, the only film to have an additional release aside from the Toho Master Collection is Mothra vs. Godzilla. Both Ghidorah and Invasion of Astro Monster were exclusive to this particular set. Mothra vs. Godzilla holds a very special place in my heart. It was one of the first Godzilla movies I ever watched 
on this particular DVD. It's, it might very well be just my favorite because of that in this particular Toho Master Collection set. Inside of here we have another nice frame from the movie. Each set has its own set of different bonus features, all of which are very cool to look at. Uh, I don't watch them very often, but every now and then I like to go back whenever I open these sets up. And it is worth noting that all of these sets include the dub and the original Japanese. Same with the previous Godzilla Raids Again. And that's actually something important to remember from when we get to the Criterion box set. Because the Criterion box set does not actually have every dub, and I'll talk more about that when we get to the box set, but because of that there's still merit to owning these particular DVD copies because they do have the English releases. And of course, I prefer to watch the original Japanese releases, so I'm not dogging on Criterion for that, it's just that it's nice to have both options. I mean, I did grow up watching the dub for Mothra vs. Godzilla and the others as a kid, so it's kind of fun to go back to those. The next couple movies are a bit interesting. Whereas we've been mostly looking at classic media releases, now we're moving on to Sony slash Tristar. If I remember correctly, Tristar slash Sony had gotten the rights to certain movies that Classic Media didn't for distributing around the time of... Well, around the time when they still had ownership of, you know, Godzilla's name. But they, they only released a couple movies, basically all the ones that weren't released by Classic Media with the exception of uh, Destroy All Monsters and Megalon. Just, yes, going off the top of my head, I believe that, that was it. Godzilla vs. Sea Monster had been released a couple different times, so this one isn't entirely a necessity. Uh, there are different releases of these movies, Blu-ray and DVD-wise, and I'll actually talk about that particular distributing company when we get to the Blu-ray section. But uh, these aren't bad, by any means. They've got the English, they've got the Japanese, the quality's pretty good. They just don't look as cool packaging-wise compared to the others, and it's not as consistent in the shelf. Also, these can get kind of pricey, for collectors, so I wouldn't recommend it unless you really just want to have every version on your shelf, like my dumbass. Now, Son of Godzilla is only available on this DVD in Criterion, in terms of being official, so if you want it on DVD, you gotta get this one. Alright, next up is Destroy All Monsters. This is what I consider to be the halfway point of Showa. Not entirely true, but kind of. Kinda is. It was intended to be the last one, and of course that that never happens. The releasing in this particular film is a bit odd. In terms of DVD, I believe this was the more, most popular and official release. Uh, this is ADV, yes. There's also a release by Tokyo Shock. Tokyo Shock, I believe. I have their Blu-ray, but not their DVD release. Uh, same cover. So when I show you the Blu-ray, you'll get the general idea. The Blu-ray is the definitive way of owning it. However, I will say that the Criterion actually has the dub for Destroy All Monsters, so that one's not imperative that you get an uh, individual release for it. You're, you'll be fine with that in terms of ownership. Now, this DVD is kind of disappointing because you put the disc in and then the movie starts and then it's over and then it starts again. Dub only. There's not even a main menu. So don't get this unless you're a collector. Either get the Tokyo Shock release or just get the box set. <laughs> Now this one is uh, kind of the black sheep of the Godzilla franchise. I'll be honest, this is my personal least favorite out of all 30 plus movies, even the 98 Tristar, which I've come to have more appreciation for, and I'll talk about that when we get to it. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm just not that fond of this film. It's a really weird, it's a, it's a good concept about, you know, standing up for yourself and standing against bullies and this movie does have a fan base so it, 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 this is just my personal opinion it's my personal least favorite in the entire franchise and it kind of bothers me that this movie got a Tokyo Master collection set instead of I don't know destroy all monsters or a more deserving movie this film did get a uh, I believe two DVD releases Scimitar, Scimitar and Sony I believe or Classic Media I'll correct myself, uh, future me will correct myself on that. Now the next three movies I unfortunately do not have on DVD. 
I do have them on Blu-ray, but I do not have the DVDs. Uh, that is Godzilla vs. Smog Monster, or Godzilla vs. Hedera, Godzilla vs. Gigan, and Godzilla vs. Megalon. Now, whereas Smog Monster and Gigan were released by Sony slash Tristar, Megalon's a little bit more complicated. The only real good official release was the Tokyo Shock, who also released Destroy All Monsters. I do have the Blu-ray release, but just like Destroy All Monsters, I didn't get the DVD release at the time. I just chose to get the... I believe I actually bought them as a bundle, the two Blu-rays together, but... Uh, so I can't really I can't really talk about the DVD quality wise, but I would just assume that it's better to get it on Blu-ray. And now we come up to the last two films of the Showa era. Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla and Terror of Mechagodzilla. As you can see, one is Toho Master Collection and the other is Sony TriStar. Not too much to say here. Uh, these are both actually no, Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla is exclusive to the Sony TriStar release. Whereas Terra Becca Godzilla has a couple other releases. So, and if I remember correctly, Godzilla vs. Mega Godzilla was one of the last ones I got because it was pretty expensive. But before the Criterion box set came out, I had to get that release because it was the only way to own it. But just as all the others similar to these releases, they're great quality. Packaging's nice for Terra Mega Godzilla. Consistent, quality's really good. You've got the English and Japanese, and you're all set. And here's what the Toho Master Collection looks like in the box. I've been hunting these movies down individually for a while, and then I had finally run across a good deal for the box set, so I went ahead and nabbed it when I could have. This is actually the second of three different versions of this box set. I would have preferred to have gotten the first version, I think it's the nicest. But this one is essentially the same thing, just in a little bit cheaper box. And then the third version is probably the cheapest made option of all. It's uh, basically just all the discs of these movies put together in normal DVD cases. Um, yet it's still kind of pricey to find that version. I think, I, honestly, I wouldn't mind having the third version as well, just to have like, I don't know, just have extra copies of the discs and kind of more convenient packaging if I were to marathon I could just you know, flip through them but it doesn't matter and, and of course these aren't, this isn't the only box set that's been released of the Showa period there was a box set by Sony Wonder which actually came with a Rodan DVD I do have the Rodan DVD but it's dub only which is kind of unfortunate the only Toho Master Collection DVD that I'm missing which does not come in any of the box sets so it was sold individually is the Rodon slash War of the Gargantuas combo DVD set. Uh, this is probably the hardest to find, most expensive, and probably the best way to own Rodan on DVD as well. I would love to get my hands on this someday, but until I can find a really good deal for it, I probably just gonna have to stick to my Sony Wonder copy. So for the next two eras, Heisei and Millennium, I'm missing quite a bit of the DVDs. Like I said, I have all of the movies on Blu-ray, but this is where I'm really lacking in the DVD department. So I'll still talk about the different releases, but I'll go ahead and show what little I have now. Starting off, I have Godzilla 1984. This is the first and currently only official release of this movie in the United States, the original Japanese. Godzilla 1984, not to be confused with Godzilla 1985, which was the US release. And it's not just a dubbing, they actually basically did what they did with King of the Monsters, brought Raymond Burr back, threw some American actors in there. Not necessarily as good as King of the Monsters by any means, but it's still pretty cool. Pretty interesting with the way they did it to kind of give a sequel to the original, in the same way that 1984 was a sequel to Gojira, ignoring all of the Showa films. I really love this movie. Uh, it seems that some people don't. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily my favorite of the Heisei, but, but I do like this movie. I love the 80s aesthetic. Uh, it's just, I think the practical effects are really cool in this one as well. And this introduces the newer suit design, which gets perfected in Biollante and is the definitive look for Godzilla. Moving on next is Godzilla vs. Biollante. This is the DVD released by Miramax. This is my favorite Godzilla movie of all time, aside from the original, or at least in the top three. 
this and Mothra vs. Godzilla competing. I love this movie to death. It's just amazing. Uh, the story, the characters, the visuals, uh, even the monster by Alante is really neat. And unfortunately, this is one of the hardest movies to get your hands on. The DVD isn't nearly as expensive as the Blu-ray, but I'll talk more about that when we get to it. That's all I have of Heisei on hand, but I'll still talk about some of the other releases. Next two films, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah and Godzilla Mothra Battle for Earth, were released in a combo pack. They were also released in a triple pack with GMK. The next film, Godzilla vs. Mega Godzilla 2, actually came out on its own individual DVD release. And then lastly for Heisei, Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Desestroya came out on a combo pack. Next up, we have the first two of the Millennium series, Godzilla 2000, Godzilla vs. Mega Gyrus. Godzilla 2000 is the English version only, something important to note. Uh, you do not get the Japanese release, that's only available in the Blu-ray. That was actually one of the main main selling points, so if you're interested in having the original Japanese, hunt down the Blu-ray. Don't get the DVD. DVD is really cool though, it has a fun little interactive menu which is makes me nostalgic for you know, the 2000s, early 2000s DVDs. And Mega Gyrus isn't nearly as cool DVD wise, but you know, you got the, you got the original Japanese, you got the English, you're good. Now as I said earlier, Godzilla GMK came out in a combo pack, triple pack with King Ghidorah and Mothra Battle for Earth, but it also came out on its own individual DVD release. And then the last DVD that I have is Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. So I'm actually missing a movie between this and Mechagyrus, which would be GMK. But Godzilla against Mechagodzilla has got the English and the Japanese and DVD quality. The last couple of the Millennium series were also released on individual DVD releases, Godzilla Tokyo SOS and Godzilla Final Wars. DVD quality and English and Japanese, I believe. Also a fun thing to note that Godzilla Final Wars also came out on the PSP video uh, UMD. I haven't got it yet, but I do, I do want to track down a copy if I can find one. Now before moving on to the Blu-rays, I do have a couple DVDs I want to showcase here. I have the Sony Wonder Rodan DVD that I mentioned before from the box set. This is English only, unfortunately, and DVD quality. And I, this one's pretty cool. The Icons of Sci-Fi Toho Collection. It has the H-Man, Battle in Outer Space, and Mothra. That was the big one. Mothra is only available in this set and another sci-fi random movie collection DVD set. Now, Mothra didn't have a, its own individual release, unfortunately, not until Blu-ray would come along. And of course, I'll talk about that later. And lastly, the latest pickup in this collection, actually, I, uh, I got this in one of those $7 bins at Walmart. It's the complete animated series of the Godzilla Tristar animated series. All 40 episodes in one set. Uh, it's, released, it's released by Mill Creek, I believe. Yeah, they got all the discs stacked on one another. I haven't watched a single episode of this. I have no idea if it's good. People tend to like this more than the movie. Uh, like I said, I haven't watched it. I don't know. Maybe I will watch it someday, but... Seven dollars, Godzilla, might as well put it in the collection. There was a DVD box set that came out called the Toho Collection, released by Sony. This includes all of the Heisei and Millennium films starting at King Ghidorah, all the way up to Final Wars, including Rebirth and Mothra 1 and 2. This is an almost perfect collection to get. If you could get this to go along with the Criterion box set, as a starter, you'd be all set. The only thing you'd have to get would be Godzilla 1984 and Godzilla vs. Biollante, and you'll have the entire everything up until 2004. However, this box set has gone out of print, I believe, and the prices have gone up. Alright, now we're getting to the good stuff. No gaps here. I have every official Godzilla movie that's been released on Blu-ray in the United States. Just as I did with the DVDs, I'll start off with Showa. So here's Godzilla, the original Criterion release. This is before the box set, uh, and there is differences in the packaging and disc art, but I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, I believe it's the same thing if you put the disc in. There might be different menu art to match the Criterion box set, but uh, it's the same picture quality and the same bonus features. 
I usually just put this disc in myself whenever I watch it because I just love this particular box. The packaging's really cool. This did come out on DVD as well, but get the Blu-ray. I mean, come on. If you can, get the Blu-ray. It's just better. One of the coolest things about this is its packaging, and I'll show you what I mean by trying to open this up. Just look at that. G-Man's popping out at you. This is probably the coolest actual thing in my DVD collection aside from the Criterion box set, and I, I mean the Godzilla part of my collection. I love the packaging in the original Toho Master Collection, but this is a this is a contender right here. It looks so cool. And of course we have the Criterion box set. I've already done an unboxing of this when I first got it, but I didn't actually take time to talk about it. Uh, it's phenomenal, to say the least. There are some minor flaws I have with it, just as a diehard collector. Now, my major complaint about the box set was the disc packaging. And I almost actually lost a disc because of this, because of some of the adhesive that got stuck on the disc. So I came up with a solution. Well, I didn't actually come up with it, but I bought these custom cases. Custom Blu-ray cases that would hold all of the discs. And they look really cool, especially when you put them in the shelf. It just matches. It looks like an official Criterion individual case release. Uh, four discs per set. Uh, and just a detail on here. I didn't make these. I can't take credit for it. Uh, I bought them online from a guy who did make them. Did a really amazing job. But if you're looking to start your Godzilla collection, get this box set. It, it already gives you the entire Showa collection in one set. That's something we fans have been asking for for forever. And now we finally have it. Remastered as well. Not the greatest remasters, and that's not exactly Criterion's fault. They just didn't have all of the material that they needed to do the most epic remasters, but they still look amazing. Here we go, the OG King Kong vs. Godzilla 1962-1963. This one's actually specifically 1963. This is the Universal Blu-ray release, almost identical to their DVD release, just enhanced picture quality and audio. If you were to get it, get this one. But actually, if you're going to get the Criterion box set, you're already getting the same exact picture quality. I believe it's the same exact Universal release from this Blu-ray that's on on the Criterion box set. The Criterion box set does have the original Japanese and that is the only way that you can own it. So it's something else to work, to make note of. Now the rest of the movies up to Sea Monster are only available through the Criterion box set. However, Kraken Releasings did make a Blu-ray for Godzilla vs. Sea Monster. They also released a DVD as well. This Blu-ray for Ebra blew my mind when I first got it. This was one of the earliest Godzillas I had gotten on Blu-ray. I had actually gotten this Blu-ray before I got the DVD, so I was going off of VHS memory here. But when I put that Blu-ray in, I was blown away. Not only had I never even heard of this distributing company, but when I watched their quality, their remaster, I was just... It was breathtaking. It was beautiful. The same goes for their other releases as well. They did a damn good job putting these movies on Blu-ray. Now the next set of movies are also only available on Blu-ray on the Criterion set up until Destroy All Monsters. This is the Tokyo Shock release I was talking about earlier. This one, if I remember correctly, is out of print. Uh, it was out of print around the time that I got it because it was still kind of pricey, but it, they, I'm pretty sure the price has gone up since then. The, this is a pretty cool release. Uh, I love the cover of it. It looks really cool. The Blu-ray quality is really good. It's a great remaster. You've got the original Japanese and the English, which we didn't have with the DVD prior to this. Of course, there is a DVD release of this particular uh, Tokyo Shock release as well. I don't have it, so I can't compare it. Now, this movie does come with the dub in the Criterion box set. So getting this particular release isn't a necessity. The next two Blu-rays were released by Kraken as well. Smog Monster and Monster Island. Uh, Hedera, Gigan. You can see the packaging similar. The... Pretty much everything about this is similar to the Sea Monster release. Menu-wise, picture-wise, everything's great. It's an awesome release to have. And similar to the Sea Monster release, there's still merit to owning these two as well because they do have the dubs, which are not available on the Criterion release. Next up is the other Tokyo Shock release, Godzilla vs. Megalon. 
Very similar to Destroy All Monsters. You've got the original Japanese, you've got the English. It's a great remaster, and to my knowledge, this is the only actual official release of Godzilla vs. Megalon. This and its DVD companion, both by Tokyo Shock. Now the dub is available in Criterion, so just as with Destroy All Monsters, if this costs too much, don't fret over it too much. Now lastly, here is Mothra, the Blu-ray steelbook release. Oh my god, was I excited when this came out. I had been wanting something like this to come out. i have been wanting a Blu-ray release of Mothra for a while, and to see that Mothra not only got their own individual release, but a Blu-ray steelbook as well, and it is one of the most beautiful steelbooks I have ever seen in my life. I'll show you all the different, the interior artwork and the back art here. The slipcover just adds on to it so nicely. It is just an absolutely beautiful Blu-ray. You've got to get your hands on this if you can. It's still being manufactured to my knowledge, and I don't think that it's too hard to get your hands on. So if you can, get it before it's gone. This is an amazing Blu-ray, an amazing thing to own if you're a kaiju fan. you got to get it. Moving on to the Heisei films, everything from here on gets kind of pretty simple and consistent. We have the last of the Kraken releasings, Godzilla 1984 on Blu-ray. Compared to the DVD, better quality, a little bit cooler menu, but not too much of a difference, just picture quality is a bit better, that's all. I also love that they put the Godzilla love theme for the menu music on the main menu. A really cool thing that a lot of people know about because it was only in the Japanese film. So that soundtrack isn't very familiar here. Now this is probably the most expensive and rare thing in my entire Godzilla collection. The first time on Blu-ray release of Godzilla vs. Biollante. I bought this right before it went out of print too, so I'm grateful for that. As I said, this is my favorite Godzilla movie, aside from the original. And to have it on this definitive release, this is the best release of the movie ever and I feel terrible that it's gotten so hard to find it's gotten so expensive I would love for more people to be able to get their hands on this movie I'm glad that I have it but I really do feel bad for the fans that weren't able to get their hands on it now we have the blu-ray version of the Toho Godzilla collection that I was talking about Sony released a box set on DVD with a bunch of the movies but they also released blu-ray double features not a box set just double features and I love and hate this. I really want to get individual covers for these since each movie has its individual disc and I think it just looked nicer on the shelf that way, but it is a convenient way of buying these movies. You have Godzilla vs King Ghidorah and Mothra Battle for Earth in one set. And this one's getting really pricey too. If you can get a good price on this one, nab it. For you. I don't care what point you are in collecting these movies, I've seen that this one's going up really high. The next two movies are put together, Mecha Godzilla 2 and Space Godzilla. We also have Godzilla vs. Destroya here with Godzilla vs. Mega Gyrus. Now you'll notice that that is not in the correct order, Mega Gyrus does not come after Destroya, and the reason they did that I'll explain in a second. In terms of quality, they are much better than the DVDs. I've been able to compare some of them, I don't have all of them to compare obviously, but the picture quality is a bit better. Here is another Toho Godzilla Collection Blu-ray. This is the Rebirth of Mothra trilogy, all three movies in one set. If I remember correctly, this is the only release that had the third movie. You could get the first two on DVD, but the third one I think only is available in this Blu-ray. If you're a fan of the Heisei era and a fan of Mothra, it's a pretty cool little set to have. Now here is Godzilla 1998, my only copy aside from the VHS. This is the 4K still book. You see the 4K and Blu-ray discs back there, really cool artwork. I've come to love this movie more than I did before. Uh, a lot of people hate it. I respect it at this point. I don't agree with everything about it, but at this point it doesn't matter. The movie's ages old, people know that it wasn't the best. I can still sit down and laugh at how corny it is. Now this is why Godzilla vs Megagyrus was set up with Godzilla vs Destroya. That's because Godzilla 2000 got its own single release. 
because it has both the US and Japanese versions. Now why exactly they couldn't put another disc on here because both movies are still on one disc, I'm not entirely sure, but I guess they're trying to sell it as, you know, you're getting a two for one already in this. Because that is kind of true. They did do a bit of cutting with the US version that makes the Japanese version more different than just being a dub. And lastly, the last two of the Toho Godzilla collection going up to Final Wars, GMK, Against Mecha Godzilla, and then Tokyo SOS paired with Final Wars. See some of the disc art here. It's really cool. I love GMKs. Now let's move on to the last couple movies left in the franchise. We have Godzilla 2014. This was the original Blu ray release with slipcover. And then Godzilla 2014, the 4K steelbook. Uh, yeah, screw this Blu ray. Get the 4k if get the 4k if you can it's not just the 4k it's remastered there's better colors you can actually see what's happening they fixed the problems that we complained about and i love that next up is shin godzilla this is the first funimation release they did reprint this movie with a different less cool casing i got the original first release i actually got this the day it came out and it was the first time i got to watch the movie i loved it if you own any Funimation Blu-rays, you pretty much know what to expect here. You know, the quality is good. There's actually a reversible cover. Uh, I don't think this was fully intended, but I did it anyway, and I think it just looks cool. This is a good movie to start with if you're a fan of uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion, as this was directed by Hideaki Anno, the creator of Neon Genesis. I'm a fan of both, so that's really cool. Now, this isn't a Godzilla movie, but it is part of the MonsterVerse MCU bullshit, so... Here is Kong Skull Island. I got the Blu-ray because I didn't have a 4K player at the time. Then next up, Godzilla King of the Monsters 4K. I had the option to get the still book, but I thought that the cover on this actually looked a lot cooler. So I went with this instead. Kind of lamenting that decision now. And lastly, the most recent release, Godzilla vs. Kong 4K still book. Really cool artwork here. I haven't actually watched the still book yet. I uh, haven't seen the movie since theaters, but really fun movie, really cool. I assume it's a good release, as with all the others. Now here's all the movies on the shelf, just to give you an idea how it looks when I shelve them together. But as I said, collecting Godzilla is a very, very expensive and tiresome hobby. It took me years, from middle school to I think my first year of college. It's a long but very rewarding hobby. 